On Rayam Miko Avenev. Part 1. Quebec, December 2, 2019. Well, dear friends, I'm extremely happy to be with you again in this charming country, and I present all my blessings to you, and agape, of course. So it is with great joy that I will listen to your questions and that we will exchange together all that you have to ask, all that you also have, and I hope to testify to what you are going through. You know that this is what is extremely important today, in order to make the brothers and sisters vibrate, to make them resonate, because all this will allow them to tell themselves that it is not something that is reserved for some who have had an asceticism or a spiritual journey but that this is precisely your simplest humanity that allows you to live agape. The testimonies that you are going to make me hear, make me listen, are, of course, also precious gifts of yourselves, that you offer to the whole of humanity, in order to spread, beyond the words themselves, the good news of the agape states that you live with more and more certainty, and more and more evidence. So, dear friend, I give you the floor for testimonies or questions. I'm listening to you. The first one. Sister, we are advised, when we leave this body of death, not to dwell on the persons or entities we will see. Example, Jesus, relatives, friends, etc., it tells me I'd see someone. How can I explain these words I hear? There's no one there. There is no one, that is, it has been explained by the head of the head, and in the experiences of imminent death, all the brothers and sisters who came out of their bodies, they entered a tunnel, they met beings of light or members of their families, who stand in their way, in relation to the sun and the light that is behind them. These forms of light that you see, whether it is family members, younger in general, always well dressed, or great beings who have passed through this earthland, if you are Christians, you will see Christ, if you are Buddhists, you will see Buddha, but what you see is not the truth. And at the moment of your death, think of only one thing, the light that is behind these ghosts, that is your destination, that is who you are. They can't do anything against who you are. But of course, there is a form of astral seduction, a little emotional, for most of the experimenters of imminent death, who of course are no longer afraid of death, but somewhere had been deceived by these empty shells, which are, of course, astral, aquantic creations, and which correspond, I would say, to your attachments at the time of your death, or to your beliefs. If you believe in Christ, you will see Christ. If you believe in Marnie, you will see Marnie. But it has been explained many times that you have to make a difference when you are somewhere else than here in this body, here you don't need, everything is in you. But when you die, you will go through the tunnel and you will come across these pseudo-luminous ghosts. Of course, there is an essential difference, and it is not perception, because you were fooled by what you see, but what you see, you will have to look precisely, namely that the essential difference between the astral and the pure light, is this. The forms you see in the experience of imminent death, whether it is Christ, Buddha, Muhammad or whoever you want, are only ghosts of light, that is, the light is not inside the bodies, but it emanates from the outside, a little like, if you will, in the representations, in the churches, saints with a halo on their heads. But the light is not external, the true being of light is made up of light. There is no external radiation, there is a form of light delimited by a limit, but there is no haloed light around the characters. And of course, you know that there may be a number of people who have experienced impending death, who have passed through these ghosts, because they have been able to be attracted much more to the light behind these characters, than to the characters themselves, even if they are family members. They crossed these holograms, and there they penetrated the sun and came out on the other side of the sun, that is, beyond the light, what is called in Kabbalah the Ain Sephor. And it is from there that these beings, who return, do not speak of the same descriptions of their lived experiences, and especially, they are no longer subjected to emotions, to the astral, that is to say, they have discovered, outside this body, the truth. Today, as you know, truth is discovered in the heart of the heart, in the center of the heart, in the black hole. This is where truth is, this is where the world is, 
This is where all creations, and all worlds, and all multiverses, and of all dimensions, are, and nowhere else. Everything else, without exception, are only projections, or if you prefer, halos of holiness where the light is external but not internal. However, a being of light is made up of light, whatever its dimension, and it does not need to have light on the outside because it is itself the light. This is an essential difference. That's why in most primordial traditions, you had what has been called the Book of the Dead. For example, that of the Tibetans, you had the Bardo Thedal, which was a reading to be made to the beings who were passing through the light, precisely so that they would not be hindered or stopped by these residual astral forces today. So it's something you have to be informed about, whether you live or gape or not. At the moment of your transition, what we call death when we are incarnate, which is in fact the return to light now, we must not be deceived by the forms, we must not be deceived by the visions, by the stories, by the stories, whatever they are, a little like here on earth, and overcome, cross all this, to merge with the true light that you are and that does not know all these intermediate worlds, if I can say. That is what I can say about it, and it has already been explained many times. But you, you're informed of the good news, even if you are not yet living it, you're assured to live it at the time of your transition. Just keep in mind that you should not take into account any pseudo white light to present it to you or any member of your family who would appear to you, in general, to be much younger, always smiling and in good health. They're just ghosts. The truth is beyond form, beyond light, but you must already pass through this light, which is your eternity, to discover the source of light, which is the absolute, that is, nothingness, or the ultimate if you prefer. It is in this nothingness, as you can call it from the person or the great void, that you find and remember who you would before before dream, that is, before before world and any form. This is related to consciousness, it is related to the dream of creation, but it is not the truth. Everything that passes as Bida says is not true. What is true cannot pass, and has always been present and will always be present, and is not limited by any time, space, shape or dimension. This is the truth common to all brothers and sisters of humanity, but also to all forms of consciousness, whatever their dimensions. It is a reintegration into the initial point of the creation of the dream which is none other than this final moment. As has been said, you have already experienced everything, you don't need to be in memory, you just need to remember who you are. And I had already explained, I repeat, at the level of Quebec, a beacon of humanity, your motto is, I remember. There is the yes, there is the only absolute truth that does not suffer any discussion, and which can only be, as has been said, lived and recognized. There is no exception to this rule. So you cannot wonder about the fire of the heart, or you wonder about the fire of the sacred heart, or about the double terrace of the heart, or about the agape state. You can only live it, even if afterwards, of course, you can of course testify to it, with your words, with art, with poems, with what you want. But it is something that can only be experienced, and as Spider said, understanding comes from the lived experience, but never from intellectual understanding. And like each of you, here on this earth, will necessarily experience the transition, regardless of the event if I can say so. You all know that when we are incarnated, we only pass between what is called birth and death. But the truth knows neither birth nor death. And you are that. In truth, you were never born and you never died, you were there. They are not puns, they are the strict truth common to all consciousness, as soon as consciousness is seen for what it is, that is, a projective mechanism, a mechanism of exteriorization, manifestation and perception. But you predate all this. But do not worry, because I remind you that there is a collective moment that has been named the event, whatever its form, that will interest all the consciences of the earth, without distinction of any kind. And at that moment, the intelligence of the light will remind you that you are nothing of what you see, that you are predating the manifestation. And you have today and every day that passes, more and more importantly, the opportunity to experience this.
and head chief explained it to you, as well as by the ever, and Awaden, Fahan, explain it to you I believe at each agape meeting. But repetition is the basis of pedagogy, not to convince you of anything, nor to force you to believe, especially not, but to give you the essential information that will inevitably occur at the time of the transition, or if you prefer, at the time of the collective event. So that being said, we can continue. Sister. One question. Do the three stars incarnated on Earth still have a mission to accomplish? I remind you that you all have, without exception, the same mission, which is not a mission, which is to find yourself. Everything else today is no longer of any importance. You're all the stars, you're all the Melchizedeks, you're all the source and you are all the pure light, and you are all the absolute. Everything else is just part of the story. So there is no point in going back on these stars, the teaching has been perfectly structured for many years, but you are no longer in a period of teaching or questioning about, I would say, what represented variables or trinkets, which no longer matter, in relation to the truth revealed and lived. So I won't answer that question, you all have exactly the same mission, to wake up, to remember that there has never been anyone and that you are before the light. There is grace, there is beatitude, there is ecstasy and there is the absolute and unique truth where each of you can only recognize yourself in Hellenes. So don't think about the stars, don't think about the gates, don't think about energies, don't think about vibrations. Just think, if you want to think again, about a gape. Not to define it, not to explain it, but to live it. And the best posture, as you know, is humility, simplicity and, of course, the present instant, the present moment, what is present there, stripped of any past and any future, or any projection. There is beatitude, nowhere else. No vibratory rise will lead you to this ultimate truth, it has been said and explained in countless ways and by countless times, you see. So don't worry about the incarnated or not incarnated stars, because I can tell you today that all this, as we have always said, is in you. And you don't need to name, you need to name yourself, because there is only you, before you understand that everything is in you, and before you live that there is no one. We can continue, my dear friend. Sister, another question. What does it mean today to live in voluntary orgasms during the night? Laughs. And what's the question about that? Laughs. Sister. Meaning. What does it mean to live on night of involuntary orgasms? Oh, it is a process that already existed during the year, at the end of 2011, when the crystalline nucleus of the earth was released and was accompanied by the rise of which was named at the time the wave of life, which started from the crystalline nucleus of the earth, passed through your feet, and went up along the lower limbs, to merge with the ether channel, or if you prefer what is called the Sushumna. So, this particular energy, this crystalline nucleus of the earth that is linked to the memory of the first dream of creation, has penetrated some of you. And already during 2012, there were many so-called involuntary orgasms, as this sister says, that were happening. It is a truly sexual pleasure, but without sex. That is, it was the wave of life that came up, this fire that spread, that triggered this jouissance and this orgasm, that does not need sexual activity. These are the first phases of ecstasy, quite simply, and indeed, it happens most often, of course, at night, that is, when you are at rest and the mind can no longer intervene. So it is a process that is quite possible, I am not saying that it is essential and that it occurs in everyone, but indeed, many of you have seen this mechanism of nocturnal orgasms, totally as you said, involuntary, that is to say not sought, and which participate mechanically, vibratory and energetically, in the fusion of the wave of life at the sacrum and the small basin, which allows the fire of the heart to ascend to the heart and to the top of the skull, yes. So there may be ecstatic phenomena, but at the level of the heart, and orgasmic phenomena directly at the level of the small pelvis. This is quite normal, and when it happens, there is nothing to look for as an explanation, it is the alchemy between truth and the ephemeral, between what is the simulacrum and the sacred. 
it is the same thing, it is the meeting of the ephemeral and the eternal, with a much greater degree of acuity than during, of course, the years 2012 and following. Because you know that there is no longer any restriction of mirroring link to the primary anomaly, that everyone everywhere on this earth has the same ability to live agape, provided that he is informed, not of what agape is, but that this is simply enough, if I can say so, to return his consciousness without request, to the central point of the heart, what we had named the heart of the heart, to see appearing Shantinalaya or the Sprime Peace Abode. So, there is no need to analyze, there is just need to live it. Don't bother your head with explanations. Everything that happens, I'm going to give you a good recipe. Simply accept and verify for yourself that if you accept what is manifested, whatever the manifestation, in your body, in your life, in all sectors whatever they are, if you seek to understand, at that moment you involuntarily enter into existence. And you know that resistance creates an even more intense fire, because it is the consumption of the fire of consciousness, I would say ordinary or vital fire, by the igneous fire. And if you want to spend this period with peace, I would say, with beatitude, just accept, it has been repeated countless times, just say yes, and embrace everything that comes along, even the most indigestible things if I can say, are only there to remind you of who you are. And if you accept what is happening in your life, in your body, you will immediately notice that things change, not according to your will, not according to your efforts or your decisions, but that this is directly the intelligence of light that is at work, and it frees you from very great weights if I can say, the weight of guilt, the weight of karma, the weight of memories, the weight of habits, the weight of any projections into the future, such as a new earth, a new dimension. Simply be present at the heart of the heart, and at that moment, the light is revealed to you, and the truth is revealed to you. You're anterior to the light. So, dear friend, I'm listening. Sister. This is a testimony from a sister who is not present and the testimony is spread over two consecutive days. All right. Sister. Hello OMA, and to all of you gathered here today. I would like to share with you a testimonial from a personal experience. My spouse has been going through a lot of events for almost a year, about ten at a time. He lives his ephemeral life, and he has a lot of difficulties with my way of being, since I received the light with full force. But he's holding up. I can't talk to him about almost anything, because he doesn't believe in that and I respect him. Sometimes I dare to talk to him very gently and simply, and he resists. So I'm giving up. For about a month, he has seen a light, and at first he told me, it was quite far from him, and he sees it every day, and sometimes once or three times in the same evening. Yesterday, he shared with me that the light came back three times in the same evening. It had been a few days since she had come, except that her first manifestation, the light was directly on her left shoulder. Each time, it is always on the left side. The second time, the light turned into a dove and flew away. And the third time, she stood in front of him. He was watching TV and we have a big screen and he asked her why she came to see him, but has not yet received a reply. I think that two days later, it happened that his sister, who had an abscess and who went to see the dentist, and finally a specialist surgeon. When she woke up, she was very agitated that they had to put her to sleep again and they had to send her to the hospital urgently, because she was not waking up anymore. She was asleep for almost 24 hours. When she came to, she was no longer speaking and still very agitated, and no longer recognizes anyone. The doctors don't know what's wrong with her. The doctors therefore decided to put her in the corridor for 24 hours, hoping that she would be less agitated and would do some tests. My spouse, who is usually very touched by emotions, tells me that he is the only one who has no opinion, tells me that he has confidence, that everything will be fine. It's not his habit. He finally said, maybe my family thought, he doesn't love his sister. He was in real control of his emotions. It was very new for me to see him like that, and very happy at the same time. 
I believe that the light has done a lot of work in him and I am delighted with the attitude of seeing how he is doing better in this everyday life, even before he shares his testimony with me. It is really extraordinary to see his evolution, even if he says he doesn't believe, and questioning God. Finally I see hope coming with the presence of the intelligence of light at his side. My heart is filled with joy and gratitude. That's the end of the testimony for the first day. Shall I read to you right away the testimony of the second day that follows that one? I'll just say a few words if you don't mind, before we continue. Through this testimony, you have the indisputable proof that even brothers and sisters, that is the husband, but you will see in your families, everywhere, it has been said, that you will have brothers and sisters who, overnight, were with total denial, in contradiction with your experience of light, who will live the same thing. And that's what's magical. That is to say, this person, who believed in nothing, finds himself confronted with the light, with himself in truth. And of course, the fact of seeing this light, of course, I will not go back to the fact that this light is seen, first on his left, on his left shoulder, in front of him, because it is very characteristic too, but it has been explained many times, it is not important. What is important, as his wife, his husband, says, is to see the radical change in a character. That is the truth. And you can see, through this testimony, that it can, if I can say so, fall on you, even if you're opposed to it a priori, because it is the same gift that the intelligence of light gives to everyone, whatever they say and whatever they think about it. I also mean by this that somewhere, someone who opposes the subtle, the truth, but who has a good heart, is more likely to live the truth instantly, than someone who is still attached to scenarios, energies, visions or vibrations. Because fundamentally, her husband, whatever the character, had, even before the character faded, a heart that may be pure, and perhaps much purer, than the one that is in the manders of a spiritual journey and that seeks outside, or in multiple experiences, the truth that can never be found. As was said this morning, I heard that, it is the light that finds you, but you can't find the light, because that's who you are. It's just a memory, a memory that comes back, that's how to remember. Remember not past lives, not the elements of this life, not any future, but to live the present instant. Everything is written in the present instant. So you have the yes, which was revealed to you a few weeks ago. You have the pronunciation of your last name and first name, you have the embrace, you have the acceptance, the truth it is there. She cannot be in any desire, even honest, if I may say so, to find the truth. It is the truth that finds you, it is not you who finds it. But when it is found, then you know that it is the truth, and it is the same for every brother and sister of this earth, right now. So, yes, you will see surprises, and I would say more and more surprising, and you will see changes in family, relatives, friends, overnight, people who were perhaps, as you said, materialistic, who did not want to believe in anything, and yet had a pure heart somewhere, even if the character was closed, rigid, austere. The important thing is not appearance, the important thing is not even the actor on the stage, the important thing is to be the observer, the witness or the spectator yourself. Of course, people who do not have beliefs, who do not believe in anything, today, do not need energies and vibratory rises. They live it spontaneously. It also corresponds and this is what we had always announced that the last ones would be the first, and that the first ones, that is to say that all those who followed the vibratory paths would be the last ones. It is not a punishment, it is an unstoppable logic. Because you know that what is most important is not to have a brother or sister who is today a master or a great initiate or a great awakened. There is no such thing, you're all in each other, each of you is the other, without exception. And for that you don't need speeches, you especially need to be yourself, without any pretensions other than to live the life of the present instant. As Nizagadea said, the spirituality that has been fundamental to bring you to this day, today represents a weight, it is the weight of beliefs, the weight of adulations or adoration of those great beings who have passed through the earth but who are only you, too. 
you're Christ, you're Mary, you're the stars, you're the creation, you're also the devil, you're all of us at the same time, at the same time as today, but at different times and in different spaces that meet today in what has been called the zero time, or if you prefer, the alpha and the omega gathered at the same moment. The loop is closed, the initial moment is indeed nothing more than the final moment when you must remember that you were dreaming, that there is no more good than evil, that there is no more suffering than joy, but that there is only truth. Of course, within this body of flesh, you will express it, even after it has been lived even after just one breath, you know that it is the truth and you can only see the changes in the character's behavior, which becomes much more fluid, much lighter, and as our sister said in this testimony, with an apparent loss of emotions. This does not mean that this person is insensitive, but he has radically transformed by the action of the intelligence of the light, and, in this case, by the presence of an entity of light, within the Marian channel, above the left shoulder, which has revealed the truth. And this being of light did not tell him anything, because he was not there to make speeches to him, nor to tell him who he was, but to merge and resonate with him, and open the gates of truth. That is what happened, and that is what this testimony does best, and it will also manifest itself in more and more families, groups or meetings of any kind. Then we can continue. Sister. The rest of the testimony, this part concerns her brother's sister. The doctors don't know what's wrong with her, she's being tested and so far the tests are all negative. They gave her brain electrodes because she was having epileptic seizures. They put her in an artificial coma at least three times because she was too agitated. She was shaking. It looks like she's in shock. This morning, they woke her up, but no more news. Thank you OMA. Can you shed some light on these events, and gratitude for your support here below? Yes, it's called, what this sister is going through, and through this particular sleep where everyone, of course, medically, panics to find the reason, I can tell you that they won't find it. These are spontaneous stasis mechanisms that begin to appear in siblings who have no idea what it is. Like a kind of lethargy that takes you, where the body can effectively no longer respond and you can fall asleep without being able to be awakened. You know that at the moment, you have brothers and sisters struggling to remain incarnate. They know they can leave at will, but they will stay until the end to attend the final scene and accompany you. But they are no longer attached, in any way, to this body, to this life, and to the ephemeral, that is, to this dream. They are awakened definitively, but they accept, somewhere sometimes with difficulty, to let the dream continue, to accompany until the last moment the dream of creation. So don't be alarmed, you will find, beyond the spontaneous awakenings as in the first part of the testimony, that there are also cases where you have brothers and sisters who suddenly seem to fall into a kind of catalepsy or stasis state as we have explained at length, which correspond to the proximity of the collective event, of course. So, by the way, you know that it is December, of course, that I spoke about November as well as Black November, you have seen everything that has happened on this earth, the month of December will be a colorful month. That is to say that you will see amazing things in all colors, at all levels, and I am not just talking about climate events or elementary activities. Many surprises, many miracles, many transformations, many sudden events of different kinds will occur in many of you during this period, until the end of the year. And remember that, of course, the first reflex is to look for a medical reason or to look for a cause, entities, attacks or other things. Anyway, all this is nothing. But if this sister comes back completely, she too will be able to testify to what she experienced in this moment of catalepsy, stasis, sleep, from which she can no longer escape. You have the event at the door, the stasis, the three days, the visibility of Nepia, all these events that we explained many years ago, are taking place before your eyes. Of course, there is no date, but it can be any minute now. It can be in several months, but it doesn't matter, because when you live the truth, time doesn't matter. And as I have had the opportunity to say, and I say it again now, the more days pass in relative tranquility, the more it is a boon, 
It is an exceptional opportunity to set up and sit, if I can say so, even more truth and good news, so that information can flow in everyone. Because the more you will live it, in anticipation of the event, the more the shock of humanity in its resultory phase will be softened. You wake up without difficulty, without having to go through too many nightmares. Accept what is happening in your life, not as a renunciation or bankruptcy of your will, but really as a form of transcendence and crossing of illusion, which reveals you to the truth that you are, and that is fundamental. The simpler you are, the more available you are to live what you have to live. When someone talks to you, I don't only talk about the meeting, but even in the street, someone asks you for information to find his way, there is also a resonance that happens at that moment. And the more you are available to answer, to serve, even to give the road to someone, the more you will make a gape and the agape resonance live in you and in the other. You don't need to know him, you don't need to know who he is because he is you. Simply be in this notion of service to the other, who is only you, be available every minute of your life, for what is happening. You have nothing else to do, everything else is fun. So I know this head chief is having fun right now with waves, you have the right to have fun with what you want, you can paint, you can laugh, you can sing, the main thing is to be fully present at what you do or what you are. Everything else is done automatically. The testimony of this woman with her husband earlier is eloquent, isn't it? It describes a process that is at work everywhere. You're going to have more and more, for example, what I call the bad boys. I am not talking about Ekans, but about human brothers and sisters, who were with predation, in certain professions, in certain behaviors, who from one day to the next will start crying and asking forgiveness, from themselves and others, and will transform themselves. They don't need to know that there are stars, that there is Mary, that there is Christ, that there is Buddha, that's all over. All these religious and spiritual stories belong to the simulacrum, to the past. Truth needs no effort, it does not need stories, it does not need masters, it does not need God or devil, you're all these at once, of course. Live it and you can only remember who you are before the form, before the world. It's so simple, as Eber says, that it's so simple that you can't believe it, and besides, it's better not to believe it, you just have to live it. Belief is useless, and to say yes is to put an end to all beliefs to all assumptions, to all scenarios, to all visions. That doesn't mean the visions stop. As I was saying, head chief you can have fun with waves, but it's a distraction. Because what is important, when you do something today, when you have lit the truth, whether it is simply your work, or your role as a mother, it is enough to spread a gape. You do not need postures, you do not need to remain still, you do not need to meditate or pray, you simply need to be truthful and authentic, and you are truthful and authentic when you are fully present in the present instant, deprived of any reference to the past and any projection into the future. It is as simple as that. At that moment, you find yourself and you can say, I remember. Yes, I am that, no doubt possible, no question possible. This will put an end to fears, guilt, role-playing, functions, or implications. This does not mean that you will be indifferent, but that you will be transcendent in all areas of your life, and you know when you live it that you do not need anything else, except the energies, whether you perceive them or not, whether you have experienced the vibrations or not. Love is naked, as has been said, joy is naked, it does not need decoration or form, nor your conscience. This is what Eber calls the absolute I or the eternal I, as opposed to the little I, which has nothing to do, I remind you, with the self. The self is still a shimmer, it's still somewhere unfinished. But you don't need to finish anything. When you live it, you can only say, it's always been there, but I forgot about it. That's the good news. Come on, let's keep going. Sister. Here we have a testimony and a question from a sister who is absent. Dear OMA, through, first name, who has followed your many conferences, it has given me the opportunity to feed myself as well. I come, though unknown to you, to tell you about my life in order to obtain help that will certainly help me to live longer on earth. I'm 88 years old. 
I was raised in a family of five daughters, the last two of whom were my twin and me. I lived in two religious communities. I then married a widower who had four children. I took care of it alone, because my husband had an accident shortly after I came here. All four children eventually got married. After becoming a teacher, I met a group of friends who were seeing a medium who one day held me back because of what he had said in an assembly. I then became a medium in a deep trance. Over a period of 12 years, I have constantly practiced the words of Archangel Michael in several places in Canada such as Belgium, Switzerland, France, several cities in Quebec and the United States. It should be noted that this lady was channeling the white chariot and Archangel Michael. His question, could you explain to me why now that I'm talking to myself and I find it so difficult? Thank you very much. Dear sister, that's exactly what I said, you no longer need to bother with these great archetypes, we were there, the archangels, the stars and us, to complete the story, but we didn't know either, even as Melchizedek and even before me the great commander of the Melchizedeks, Orionis, had no idea, since he himself, Ben Sedenov, in his lifetime, had also spoken of a new land, like Sri Aurobindo and me because there was no way to detect that the final moment was not access to another dimension or a new land or a new living space of consciousness, but that it was the end of the consciousness dream. It was supposed to remain hidden until the ultimate moment, but it was written from the initial moment. That has been explained. So losing memory, of course, that there are diseases that cause you to lose memory, there is aging, there is Alzheimer, there are many diseases that cause memory disorders. But the memory problems that you have today for many, if not related to age, is only to the disappearance of the ephemeral, even to stasis. So don't be alarmed by this. And of course, when you talk about pipes that you organized with a medium, I remind you that I too, before before expressed myself through the intermediary of a head chief, I had already come before the years, after my death, immediately after my death, at the beginning of the 90s, to a medium called Remy, and I had myself called OM, so as not to be recognized in quotation marks. So, we were, were numerous to manifest ourselves, I am not only talking about us Melchized, but also about the Archangels, to prepare this time, obviously before the celestial weddings. I remind you that the first descents of the Holy Spirit on this earth began in the early 80s. And of course, there was considerable importance of the Archangel Michael, as explained by himself during the celestial weddings phase and then, during the era of Outrecht dimensions, there were, were interventions by Michael. Today, you confirmed the uselessness of all this. You no longer need all these landmarks, you only need yourself, to be true and to be in the present instant, because when you remember, even what was so important to get you there, no longer represents anything. You're the truth. So that's quite normal. But if my memories are good, I think I already had the opportunity, when I was incarnate, to meet several sisters who had told me about the white chariot. Yes, of course, of course, it was authentically Archangel Michael who, I remind you, speaks with several voices, there is not only a head of the head, you have a very well-known American who is, I would say, in quotation marks, Michael's official channel. You have an easy way to get in touch with the Archangel Enel. Some of you, here, moreover, have had for many years as guardian angel the Archangel Enel who is the Archangel of Love. All those who are linked to historical notions, who no longer have any validity, but whom you have nevertheless lived, whether it is the history of the Holy Family, in the broad sense, that is, by Christ and Mary alone, but all those who were present at that time, are present today. What's going on? What's going on? You don't need to remember these past lives, but for example, you meet a brother or sister, you start to shiver, cry or recognize yourself, even when you hear the voice. Yes, because you were part of the holy family, it is not something superior, it is simply something you experienced, because you were in the time of Christ. There are the holy families, among Krishna, among the Hindus, for example, but also in your religion. It's a reconnection 
Of course, it's real. You don't need to go back in time to find those possible lives. If they come spontaneously, that's fine, but you don't need them. It's like the story of that husband earlier who sees that light next to him and doesn't answer him. You just need to resonate, to love each other, to hug each other. It is in silence that it happens. You don't need to wake up the past. The past is past, it is dead letters, it is useless today. But nevertheless, there is a reconnection through your past incarnation as a character. In the time of Christ, you were present in one way or another, in that time. And so you've benefited, for those who were at that time, even without having met Christ, at the time of the Easter earthquake, at the time of Christ's resurrection, you all when you were at that time, carried within you at the level of the soul, you were marked with red iron by the Christic energy, for this moment that you are living. And of course, when you first meet a brother or sister, you find that you start to shiver, to cry, without knowing why. Do not try to understand why, but simply embrace each other, tell yourself your love. You don't need to remember this life, but that's what helps you remember who you are. Because you have, you were carriers at the level of the soul of this Christ seed, if you were, were at that time, not necessarily in Palestine, but at that time I said well. In the same way that you have other holy families who are meeting today, all those who were present at the creation of Atlantis, when the celestial Jerusalem landed in Teotihuacan, Mexico, there was an assembly, moreover it was called the Council of Alta, which took place in May in 50,731 BC, where there were between 30 and 50,000 people who had come to welcome the landing of the celestial Jerusalem, with the 12 Lohims who were present in it. And all those who lived at that time, 50,000 years ago, who were, bearing the same way on the level of the soul, this mark with a red iron that is waking up today. You see, you don't need to remember where you were with the Council of Alta, if you were below him, or if you were someone who witnessed this landing of the heavenly Jerusalem in Teotihuacan, but you were branded by that experience of that moment, which was to be reactivated at the final moment, that you are living today. That is why so many of you around the world find yourselves, either physically or even by listening to the testimonies as they are delivered to you, for example. You will resonate with some of them, either because they evoke your own lived experience, of course, but also because they awaken in you this brand with a red iron and what you had lived together, even if you did not know yourself at that time, but you were there. You see. So, do not seek history here too, but take advantage of this shivering, these tears, this reconnection, this recognition, to merge, to express your love, to take each other in your arms, that's all. Everything is done from there, not from any memory, not from any history. That is how you penetrate on the same level, if I may say so, in the present instant, and you see that it is the truth, and that is how everything is resolved. Be available to live what is to be lived in the instant, I would say, regardless of any history, memory or memory. The only important memory is to remember who you are before the form. And these are only excuses, since I remind you that the scenario of all the dreams of creation occurred at the initial instant, since time does not exist and space even less so. Everything has been written to perfection. The scenario of dreams, all the scenarios are exactly the same and have only been constructed so as not to lose the thread of who you are, who you are waking up today, who you remember, who fills you with grace, who fills you with joy, lightness, truth. Everything else, as our sister said, has now become superfluous and useless. But even if at that time it was extremely important, so you talked about the white chariot in relation to the Archangel Michael, I invite you, moreover, if you have the opportunity to find some of these recordings, to perceive that vibratory quality that was present, and that was preparing this present instant. By the Nizagadeo incarnate, in his last incarnation, have said that his words could not fail. You're checking it today. At the time, no one understood anything. In the same way when Brother K was giving his lectures, it was captivating, but no one lived the same thing as him. Today, you're all Krishnamurti, you're all Sri Aurobindo. If you read again, 
For example, some of Sri Aurobindo's poems, which are related to the fire of the Sacred Heart, you will indeed discover that this is exactly what you are living. All this had been a work, in quotation marks, they were milestones that had been written to allow you, if I can say so, to direct you, to channel you towards this final moment, with more and more lightness, evidence and grace. But indeed, today, it is totally useless, you must strip yourself of all these searches, all these archetypes, which have nevertheless led you to where you are today. Give thanks, thank you, but you don't need to rely on that anymore. You simply need to rely on what is in the middle of your chest, everything is there, in the heart of the heart, and indeed, everything else has become useless. But it was not useless in the scenario of the story, of course. We can continue. Sister, it's a question. Dear OMA. In the past, when I entered my heart, I saw the light. Today, as soon as I install my consciousness on the heart of the heart, it is the black hole and only black. I go back to this hole, I become the hole, that is, I have passed the light. Thank you OMA. The answer is, of course, yes. After the white paradise, there is the black hole, what the ego calls nothingness, the black forces, it is the truth. I am not talking about the black forces formed like Ekans or bad boys or puppets. The black hole is the truth. As Nizar Gadea said and as I said, a few weeks ago, it is the fusion of being and non-being. It's white paradise and black hole at the same time. And of course, when you go from the light you saw to the black hole, you have found who you are, before the light. You are the light, and you are the source of the light, and you are the source of the form, as of all universes, all solar systems, and all galaxies, as of all dimensions. And that, when you live it, this famous black hole, you recognize yourself. So of course, in the early days, there may be hesitations, especially when you had the opportunity, to live the white light, where you were so well in the self, in the glimmer of the light, and that I also said that it was spiritual pride, that the self, many years ago, was linked to spiritual pride. To believe that you are someone or something. But you are nothing, and it is by being nothing that you are everything. Your kingdom is neither neither this world nor of any world. Your kingdom is the abode of supreme peace, it is the junction of being and non-being, where everything is accomplished, where everything is perfect, and where you remember who you are. So yes, what you are living is the fusion of being and non-being, which takes place at the heart of the heart, in the center of the double terrace of the heart, at the zero point. This famous void or void, which in fact contains the whole dream of creation in the initial instant. This is what puts an end to the illusion of time, the illusion of space and the illusion of form. And it is there that you find the natural state of the eternal and absolute I. Everything else is just stories, just milestones, I say, to find you. Today, you don't need that anymore. And the more the forms disappear, and the more you experience this disappearance, this black hole, that is, when you are at the limit of the extinction of consciousness, you know, by living it, that this is the truth. There is no need for argument, there is no need for justification or explanation, it is simply to live, and it is livable in an increasingly immediate way. Every day that passes, during this multicol of December, it actually means that you will see all the colors everywhere, that you will find yourself, whether the event happens now or not. I answered the question. Then question on next testing money. Sister, there are no more written questions. So if we have brothers and sisters who, another sister, excuse me, excuse me, I have some questions that come by email. So let's listen to you, come sit with the microphone. Sister, the first testing money. This morning, around 5 o'clock, awake, I felt a vibration coming through the door of the room, which then took over my whole body, but without upward movement, compared to the previous manifestations, twice 10 years ago. Everything vibrated in me. It was very fast with a light sound. Then it stopped. It is a testimony that, out of curiosity, what is it? Thank you. Agape. Thank you. Other testing money. Sister. But, but the question said, what is it? 
and we can't hear well there. Thank you. Sister, in the question, it is asked, what is it? Of what? Was that a testimony or a question? Sister, it was a testimony. And what is being asked for, I don't understand then. I heard a testimony, I didn't hear any questions. Sister, no, there was a question, it was the same question. What is it? But what about what? Sister, to know what you owe may think about what happened to her. But I don't have to comment, except when I comment, but I don't have to say what about a testing money. I don't always understand the question. What is it? I have to appreciate the testing money, right? Sister, do you want to be read back to you? Well, I'd like to read it again, but I don't see what's going on. What do you want me to say about that? Sister, well, okay. Either there is a clear question, but what is it, it doesn't mean anything. The person may be wondering about the validity of what he or she has lived through, is that it? She doesn't have to ask the question, if she has lived, she has lived it. Sister, she probably thought you could shed some light on what she had lived through. So let's start reading it a second time. Sister. This morning, around 5 o'clock, awake, I felt a vibration coming through the door of the room, which then took over my whole body, but without upward movement, compared to the previous manifestations, twice 10 years ago. Everything vibrated in me. It was very fast with a light sound. Then it stopped. Thank you. Agape. But I still don't understand. She lived a vibratory process of fusion, agape, communion and resonance, that's all. Look, earlier you had the testimony of this woman who was talking about her husband, who believes in nothing, who sees the light, who questioned the light. She remained silent. What matters is the live experience, not the explanation, right? It was a phenomenon of resonance, she ends the testimony with agape. Yes, it's a vibratory process, it doesn't call for comment. The question, what about it, I still don't understand. If we testify, of course, I can supplement when necessary, but as the question is formulated, I still do not see what is being asked. If it is the truth of the experience, of the lived experience this morning, it is obviously true since you have lived it. Why do you want a story to tell about this? There is no need to identify who that light was, since it was you. You have lived an intense vibratory phenomenon of light revelation, that's all. Why question the live experience? Especially since these are not vision processes or, strictly speaking, energy perceptions at one point or another. It is a global vibratory process. We have explained at length that it is the fusion of the ephemeral and the eternal that triggers the fire, that this fire starts from the feet, from the chest, from the head, that this is a vibratory process, that this is the alchemy between the vital fire and the igneous fire, that's all. So either either answered the question, or I still haven't understood. And if the sister is there, well, she has to come and ask, say what she means by that. Sister, the sister is absent. Then I can't answer more than that. But the question is so vague, she questions herself, maybe it's about her own experience. But it's no use, the important thing is to live it. The explanations come on their own afterwards. When I give references that accompany your testimonies, it is just references that are precise at the level of the body, as, for example, just now the light on the left shoulder which is related to the Marian channel, but there it is a vibratory process that she has lived, of alchemical fusion between the ephemeral and the eternal. Whether it is her ephemeral and her own eternal, or what you might call an entity, it doesn't matter. The goal is to resonate together, to vibrate together, to recognize each other. So let's keep going. Sister, the second testing money. Consequence of a gape on the physical body and especially the digestive system. The feeling of hunger decreases, I eat very little, I am no longer a gourmet. Sometimes it's contradictory, because I don't know if I'm hungry anymore. I'm still eating. So, there is a heaviness in the stomach with nausea. 
the transit is disrupted, it is first of all constipation, a little normal transit. The comings and goings between the ephemeral and the absolute, exhausted. It's as if the body is struggling to keep up. In this case, it is the nothing that matters, or being in creation in my studio, then peace. Thank you. Agape. Is that the same person right now, or is that another person? Sister. She's another person. Thank you. And I have nothing to say, we listen and we resonate. The rest. Sister. It's okay. That's a question. What's the difference between a waveform called a pterioid and Larkovsky's? What are the properties of each of these scalar waves, to be used in oneself or to be placed close to oneself or in a place? Thank you very much for your enlightenment. So, the waves. In short, because this is not my field, you have what is called electromagnetism, the usual sine wave, which is polarized to a greater or lesser extent. It is the colors, the sounds, all that is electromagnetism. The scalar wave is not polarized. There are, of course, different scalar waveforms in different metal circuits, different oscillators, which generate specific waves. There are differences. But I remind you that the most important thing, and I think it is the person who makes these objects, who asks this question. The important thing is the love that you put in making them and not the measure of such a wave or scalar wave, because the intensity and quality of the love that you make in this act of creation is much more important than having such a scalar wave form or such other form. Of course, there are identifiable and measurable specificities, but today I tell you that their quality of transparency when done is much more effective than that of all the other components. But simply the scalar wave allows somewhere, whatever its form, that is, it propagates in a straight line or in a spiral, without being polarized, that is, it is neither neither nor magnetic, it propagates to infinity. This is the good news, the scalar wave, this is the good news of zero time. It is the realignment of your presence with your absence, or if you prefer the fusion of being and non-being. Do not be embarrassed by such details of measurements, units of radionics or bevis, or vibrations in positive green or negative green. Because there is something that cannot be measured, at any time, with a pendulum or something like that. It is the quality of love with which you realize this, which is much more effective than what is within, even if there are specificities. So don't worry, of course, you can ask the same question to the headmaster who, I think, is playing with that right now, but what is important is that all these geometric forms, whether they are dionic circuits, or whether you prefer to passively generate what is called the cosmic field of the electromagnetic universe, or whether they are circuits called resonators or oscillators, whatever the names are, whatever the forms are, is what you will put, you, over them, by means of your love, which is more effective than the form itself. So do not ask yourself if there is one form that is better than another, because the difference in action is not related to this or that energy, but to the quality of the service you have given to achieve this objective. There are certainly differences between a longitudinal or spiral scalar wave, depending on, say, this radiation which is supposed to be infinite, from one person to another, and which does not correspond, and which is in no way subject to gravity, or electromagnetism, and free of polarity. And so you go in a very, very subtle way, because of the intention you put into doing this, which is not a commercial act, but an act of sharing, of creation and of surrender, which is much more important than all the measures that could be done with a pendulum and all the scientific explanations that could be given to you by someone who is a specialist in these waves or even the head chief. The intention, and the heart with which you do these things, is much more important than the form. Don't focus on the differences in measurements, don't focus on the definitions of the manufacturers, but focus much more on ensuring that you always remain in this state of self-gift when you make this. This is much more important than knowing that a particular geometric form emits a particular wave or another wave. Efficiency is always the same, to bring you back to zero time, and allow you to remember. 
Of course, there are effects on pain mechanisms, on emotional or mental malaise, but this effect is not only related to what you call the scalar wave, or even to the minerals or metals that are put in this object, but with the intention with which it was done. I remind you that you have been involved for years in what has been called conscious co-creation. What you do with love is a carrier of love. What you do without love is deprived of love. It's as simple as that. And you will see, in time, in the coming weeks, if they happen, that it will be more and more powerful, whatever form you put on, whatever is measured as the Babas unit or as a type of radiation. What is important and it is not measurable, at no time can anyone measure it, agape, because it is not measurable, and that is what is most important. What you do with love, is a carrier of love. What you do without love, even if it makes sense, even if it is measured, even if it is calibrated, no longer represents anything compared to the power of love of your creative act. I talk about objects, but it's the same in all relationships, whether they're family relationships, or with someone who asks you for directions on the street. Smile, be real and spontaneous, everything else is just an alibi and an excuse. So of course, these scalar waves, of course, being related to something unpolarized, sent you back to time zero, to what I believe has been called tachyons, that is, those waves and neutrino particles that exceed the speed of light, because it is instantaneous. Then after that, it is your intention that will really crystallize, in the crystals, in the minerals, in the resin, and in the reproductions on circuits of these scalar waves. So of course, there are differences. But that I advise you to ask head of head rather than me, because I don't have the necessary knowledge, but on the other hand, what I am telling you is that the quality with which you do that is much more important than any measure you could do. At some point, if there is enough love, you no longer even need to put scalar waves or minerals, but simply draw or make an object, which has a shape of a rose, or a shape of a whale, a shape of a flower, with the intention of love, the other will be living it. The scalar wave is a support of the information of zero time, but above all, a support of agape, like minerals, you literally impregnate with agape the places where you pass, it is the remanence of the walls. When you are in zero time, like Christ in his time, when he was walking the streets of Jerusalem, and the woman who had bleeding touches him and is healed. And so did the widow, when he said, it was your faith that healed you, not me. It is exactly the same thing, but the faith in what, in life, the faith in the love that you are, even if you have not yet recognized yourself. If your intention is pure, then that is the most important thing, whatever the measures. It is a gape's primacy at all levels, not only for objects made like this, but in all creative acts, in all relationships that take place. If you put love before me as I said, if you forget yourself, if you are in service to the other, regardless of any personal advantage, you resonate with the other and you are the other. That's what a gape resonances are, whether it's through the objects, places, wall resonances, anything. You have countless brothers and sisters who find themselves living agape without knowing what it is, without having asked for anything, but they were, even without knowing it, even by refusing it. You have come out of these notions of measurement, you no longer need to measure if it is good or bad, if it is more effective or less effective, because if you do that, it means what, that you are not yet free, that you want to act according to the rules of the matter and not according to the rules of the spirit. So forget all these notions, be true, be spontaneous, even if I suspect that the chief head may have other answers than mine regarding the structural aspect of these waves of forms. But the important thing is not there, the important thing is the intention of love and service that you put into what you do, every minute. Everything else, if you measure, you fall back into duality, good, bad, there it is stronger, there it is less strong. Love knows none of this, and the one who lives the truth, especially does not need to measure anything, nor to know anything. The most important thing is its inner disposition in what is created, in what is said, in what relates, at whatever level. Everything else is just passing through. But what you do in this state of availability, the service, will never pass.
And that's what makes you remember who you are. As the chief head, you are one, we are all, one in the other. It's, I believe on the physical level, it's what we call today, no longer quantum physics, but I believe quantum entanglement, or if you prefer, it's more learned, quantum interleaving, where a particle that is at one place in the universe is connected to all other particles in all universes, and in all dimensions. Time and space do not exist. And by the way, it's been put into equation, I think, your last chief head. This equation is real, it is validated. Two particles that met at a given moment, and it is the same, as I explained earlier, for example, in relation to the Holy Christic family, or the Holy Family of the Lohims, they are often the same, but not always, that's how you remember, the rest represents nothing. Be true, be spontaneous, and when you're true and spontaneous, you no longer need to measure anything, you no longer need to understand what you are doing. That's the ego that wants to understand. But if the intention of love and service is pure, whether through a painting, a poem, objects like scalar waves put in aragonites, a t-shirt you have made for yourself or for someone else, if it is a gesture of love, then it has its action. Whatever the medium, whatever the measure, a gape cannot be measured in any way, and if you still need to measure anything, it is that somewhere there is still a certain form of duality, and especially a certain form of doubt. A gape never doubts. But then, if you want more details on the measures, I invite you to address this question directly, to ask it again directly to the chief head in a satsang, it will be easier, won't it? Moreover, Chief Head has already delivered to you for many years, a number of elements, very physical, concerning products, crystals, to help you out to the zero point. You can help yourself with what you want, the important thing today is much more when you do something, whether it is an object, an encounter, an exchange with your husband, your wife, the child, it is the state in which you are in love. It's not fair, it's not going to be your words, it's not going to be the need to persuade a child or a husband of something, it's going to be there to your availability to the luck that will act in the other. I would say, without your knowledge of your will, without the knowledge of the will of the other, that is the miracle of love. Love is total immoderation, it is madness in the eyes of men, and yet it is the only truth, you see. So do we have any further questions or written testimonies? Sister, no. So if we have. Sister, we have an oral question. What? Sister, an oral question. So the person comes to the microphone and we listen to them. Sister, thank you OMA for being with us. I have a question that is very small, for something I have lived through. I can't hear anything. I have a question for. Sister. She has a question that is very small for something she has experienced. Oh, right. Sister, about two weeks ago, during the night. Two weeks in front of the... Sister, during the night. I didn't understand anything. Sister, about two weeks ago, during the night. Art night. Is that the word night? Oh, my God, with the Quebec accent, it's getting tough. Laughs. Sister, I was in a place that seemed to be at the car dealers. I didn't understand anything. Laughs. It's like it's Chinese to me. Sister, she was in a place that seemed to be like a car dealer. Okay, so it's a dream then? Sister, yes, but very consciously this one. Sister, a very conscious dream. A lucid dream, all right. Sister, yes. And I took a few steps, and in a passage, and I turned to the left. Sister, do you hear the story well or do you need me to repeat it? We have to repeat because the microphone is not, the person speaking, is not in my vibratory field. That's why it's the right side person, no matter how intense it is, it's not even a question of accent, sometimes I can hear someone, because there's a connection being made, even if they whisper, but in other cases, no. It has to be in the vibratory atmosphere of what is called the root cosa, which is on the right and left. So, repeat, yes. Sister, I took a few steps and turned to my left in the passage, and it was so bright that my eyes were closed, 
Unable to open them, it was impossible, and even more than difficult, it was impossible. And Eves came to wake me up at that moment, and even back on the physical level, I had trouble opening my eyes. My question is, what happened, what did I live through at that time? What's the car? A vehicle. It is your body as well physical as it is of light. In this case, as you say, you were, were a car dealers. That's it. So you came to get your vehicle of eternity, of light. But it was so intense, of course, that it triggered a vibratory phenomenon, but also friction fire. The car is the physical body, but also eternity, but also the subtle bodies. The fact of seeing this car with this white light that prevented you from opening your eyes is your own encounter with your eternity. It is the installation in the white paradise, a prerequisite most often, but not always, to non-being, that is, to the black hole. In a dream, where in the circumstances of your lives, we had earlier the experience of husband and wife with light, it is the same thing. It's a vibratory resonance that brings you closer to time zero. That's all. Do you have any other questions about that? Sister, yes. In September last year, when I went to Kenmes, I recovered my body of eternity and I also lived the black hole. Is it because it has been enlightened, but not in its entirety, and here? Oh, I'll stop you right there. Since what you lived at Kenmes, have you always remained in this state of beatitude or not? Certainly not. Sister, oh, no. She answers no. Well, that's why you lived it again, with the car dealer and the light car. There is what is in the order of memory, called the initial or final moment, it is the same, where you find your body of eternity and the black hole. Either either remains, or with the vicissitudes of ordinary life and the character, it moves away, which creates great suffering, doesn't it? Sister. Oh yes. It just came back, that's all. Remember that for a whole year, whether it was me, Chief Head, Ebba and others, we insisted very heavily on habits. Habits are embarrassing when you do things automatically, out of habit, without lucidity and without mindfulness. These habits, even if they seem normal to you, take you away from the truth, because they lead you into a routine, they lead you into the habit, that is to say that you no longer need to be lucid, it is done almost automatically, it was very practical. But these habits take you away from the truth, because when you let yourself be guided by your habits, your automatisms, because you master one domain or another, you are no longer available for the observer in the present instant. And it creates suffering, which is why habits, we have insisted so much on seeing them. When you impose rules on yourself, to eat at such and such a time, to do such and such a thing always in the same way, you become a kind of parrot and monkey, and you forget who you are, and that is exactly what has happened for you, and that is certainly happening, at this very moment, for many brothers and sisters. Living in a gape experience is enough to make your mark there too. But if you are carried away by habits, by the mind, by the need to control events and things, and situations, you are no longer available for a gape, and you go into pain, and you feel like you have lost something. No. You yourself let the character come back by automatism and ease. Everything you think you control controls you and restricts you. A gape spontaneity cannot be accompanied by any desire for control of any kind. Of course, there are imperatives. When you have to pay the rent, you have to pay it. But in terms of other habits, or deadlines if you prefer, monthly, annual or otherwise, you must remain lucid, that is, available, and you cannot control and be available for the truth. This is a great lesson, everything you think you hold, holds you, at all levels, and it slows down, and it undermines agape, freedom and truth. So the fact of having lived through this is not a reminiscence to be as you say, of the commerce, but it is perhaps a more definitive and intense reinstallation of the truth. Are you in a gape again, in yourself? Sister. She answers yes. There you go. But as has been said, it only takes a minute of a gape, a black hole or full presence, or full absence, to be branded, and for some of you, you feel like you have lost something. 
but you haven't lost anything, you just haven't seen everything about your character, and in particular, everything that is related to control, guilt whatever it is, and fear whatever it is, deprives you of freedom and puts you in pain, until you accept that you can't control anything, until you agree not to be subjected to any facet of the character anymore, even if it is related to memory, or even astrological data about your personality. This is how you learn the end of the distance between you and the truth. Because there is such suffering that can actually settle back if you let the character out of habit take over his automatisms, and evidently what has been lived seems to you, not lost, but to move away, and you return in sadness, in anger. It is only because there are still memory residues left that are not karmas, but are simply behavioral postures of your life, perhaps related to your temperament, also astrological, to your memories, whatever. This is how you learn the end of the distance between you and the truth. Because there is such suffering that can actually settle back if you let the character out of habit take over his automatisms, and evidently what has been lived seems to you, not lost, but to move away, and you return in sadness, in anger. It is only because there are still memory residues left that are not karmas, but are simply behavioral postures of your life, perhaps related to your temperament, also astrological, to your memories, whatever. But it's always the same thing, it's guilt, fear, doubt, the person's automatisms, the need for control, which seem to make you lose this state of agape. But it is the comings and goings between the ephemeral and the eternal, as has been said, that will set up the eternal in a permanent way. But it is precisely when you get tired of seeing that you are not well, when you were so well, when you understand what is at stake in the character, when you really see or when you really realize what has not been seen. At that time you will laugh at yourself, that is, at your guilt, your need for control, your fears and doubts. At the time, I was saying love or fear, and you know that for many months now, me and Bide too, we have also said love or suffering. When you get tired of suffering, you will laugh at your own suffering, but to do so you must accept that you have no control and that you have no control. Love is not controlled, love is not mastered, it is lived in the present instant, independently of any conditioning, even linked to the influences of astrological signs or wounded memories, or loss of trust, or guilt, or fear. It is the comings and goings between the ephemeral and the eternal. And when you are firmly determined to let a gate be who you are, rather than the character, become again through his comforts of control, the organization, that you will drop that, that a gate will settle back in, it is not a punishment, this is also an insight into what is a gate and what is not a gate when the character tries to regain control, even if only by automatism, that is, in a totally unconscious way, but who must become conscious again, in order to laugh at it and cross it. It is also like that, and it has been said by the head chief, in one way or another, to drip yourself of the ephemeral, of creation, of your form, not to drip you of life, but precisely to live life, to live agape permanently. Agape cannot be accommodated with memories, cannot be accommodated with projections, in a new dream or in the future. That's the present instant, because if you're in a present instant, instantly, you're in agape. If you are not in a gape, it is because the present instant is no longer, you're in something other than the present instant, you're in claim, in fear, guilt, suffering, and therefore you cannot be available for the truth, even if you have lived it, as you said, some time ago, in another place. It's not a punishment, you have no guilt to maintain, no research to do, but you just have to let all these habits die. The light will always be much smarter and more organized than anything you can do through yourself, even with the most important skills. The spontaneity of life, that's it. If you're really present, you're free, you're in the gape, that is the presence and absence together. So yes, many of you are also living this kind of trinicoti tunicota, no longer entering as I called spiritual pride, the self, but simply the interplay between the ephemeral and the eternal, this fusion between the ephemeral and the eternal, which must not leave any unenlightened area, whether in the body, or in behavior, in thoughts, in the mind, in emotions, and even in relationships.
And besides, I would say, whatever I repeat, when you get tired of suffering, there will only be love left. You have also had many testimonies from brothers and sisters who have been incarnated, who have been known and who described the same thing to you. You have countless brothers and sisters today who express themselves on the present instant and on agape love, even if they do not know this word. Agape cannot be accommodated with memories, cannot be accommodated with projections, in a new dream or in the future. That's the present instant, because if you're in a present instant, instantly, you're in agape. If you are not in agape, it is because the present instant is no longer, you're in something other than the present instant, you're in claim, in fear, guilt, suffering, and therefore you cannot be available for the truth, even if you have lived it, as you said, some time ago, in another place. It's not a punishment, you have no guilt to maintain, no research to do, but you just have to let all these habits die. The light will always be much smarter and more organized than anything you can do through yourself, even with the most important skills. The spontaneity of life, that's it. If you're really present, you're free, you're in the gape, that is the presence and absence together. So yes, many of you are also living this kind of trinicoti tunicota, no longer entering as I called spiritual pride, the self, but simply the interplay between the ephemeral and the eternal, this fusion between the ephemeral and the eternal, which must not leave any unenlightened area, whether in the body, or in behavior, in thoughts, in the mind, in emotions, and even in relationships. And besides, I would say, whatever I repeat, when you get tired of suffering, there will only be love left. You have also had many testimonies from brothers and sisters who have been incarnated, who have been known and who described the same thing to you. You have countless brothers and sisters today who express themselves on the present instant and on agape love, even if they do not know this word. You think they need to burden themselves, to know what a keka is, an energy, a vibration, a vision, no. The availability at the present instant is emptiness. This is where nothing of your history, your person, your memory, your habits, your projections, in short, nothing concerning consciousness, the unconscious, the subconscious, or the supraconscious, can interfere with the eternal eye as long as it is not stabilized, yes, it can give you the impression of suffering, of being angry, and you sometimes have the impression of seeing guilt, suffering, fears reappear. These are not punishments or rewards, it is the right play of the intelligence of light that is revealed in its entirety. Be available, accept also, especially when it seems to you that you are no longer living what you have lived at a given time, accept. Do not enter into rebellion, or revolt or research. If you accept, you will go through all of this. There will be no more guilt, no more doubt, no more fear, no more character. And you will be free totally free this time. But if there is a posture of claim, needs for understanding, or to explain and understand, you are not available for a gape. It's as simple as that, but as I said, it's so simple as Epa says, that it's so simple that you don't dare to believe it, or that it seems so crazy if you can say so. And yet, you have no other choice. I remind you that everything has been written. I remind you of the sentence that Baidu was saying and that will become more and more important. Everything that has to happen will happen, whatever you do, whatever doesn't have to happen, won't happen, whatever you do. From there, if you live this, if you accept this, you're free. That's acceptance and the yes, it's not thinking about a moment that happened a while ago, and that seems to have disappeared. He's not missing. It is simply the character who has regained possession through habits, fears, doubts, guilt and suffering, which have taken you away from it. It is in this sense that we must accept, embrace, cross and say yes. So, fortunately, the intelligence of light can, like your car story before, remind you of this, like the vibratory process earlier with the question, what is it? You cannot be a gape. Be free, be true if you nourish somewhere what emerges from your personality, whether it is the need for control, as I said, or guilt, fear, suffering, they are obstacles, but the only way to be overcome them is to accept them and embrace them. 
in the same way that, already a year ago, in the processes of the perpetual baths of love that had existed, you have already lived through this kind of thing. Today, it is an intensity without equal, it is you in front of yourself, not to judge, or condemn the character once again, because there is a programming, there too, from which you cannot totally escape, even if you were free and liberated, which is a conformation of what is called the astral sky from birth. We all know that a Aries does not behave like a Capricorn, do we? That according to the planets, the temperament, the events are not the same. But all this belongs to illusion, to the ephemeral, to what happens, and if you don't pay attention, if you are not in the lucidity of the instant, at first it is extremely easy to get carried away by mental, emotional, behavioral habits, and at that moment to say that you do not understand why a gape is no more there. But a gape shows you this. It is not a punishment, it is the game of comings and goings between the ephemeral and the eternal, it is the crossing of the ephemeral into the eternal, it is reception, it is acceptance, without question, without revendication. If you are looking today to solve the why of control, the why of fear, the why of suffering, the why of guilt, you are simply not available for a gape. Agape, the agape resonance, whether it is in a network, in pairs or in space, is the solution. But if the character, without the knowledge of your eternal and absolute self, has regained his automatisms, you do not see the automaton that you are, and you believe in this automaton. This is what we call temperaments and behaviors, many of which come from history, education, but also from the astral sky of birth. Astrological, it corresponds to the personality or soul for that matter, but which are not the truth. It's a light, it's not a punishment. And besides, as you say, you have found the Sagabe state, and you will notice that at that moment, your character you see it when he becomes this automaton again, whether it is guilt, control, suffering or fear, and at that moment you laugh at yourself and Agape is there right away, that's the game, J.U., of Agape, which is taking place. Everything is written, as has been said, you can only find yourself. But don't delay. When it seems to you to move away, it is not a gape that moves away, it is you who have moved away from it, by automatism, by need to direct, to control, by guilt that has nothing to do with humility. Humility is precisely accepting, even your guilt, without nourishing it and without questioning it, the same for control, fear, suffering, that I will leave it there, but it can be everything that is opposed somewhere to love, not as we can conceive it, is there only to be consumed by love, these are the last insights, we have told you. And don't put guilt there either, by telling yourself, that's it, I've moved away from myself, no. These are automatisms and memories that run on their own. It's a hard disk, an operating program if you will, that runs on a free wheel and that you haven't fully seen yet. And these oscillations, for some of you, between a gape and something else, are only there to establish a gape, and to find you. And when you get tired, as has been said, of doing the yo-yo, then you will be stabilized in the gape. If you give yourself totally to who you are, there is no reason why a gape should seem to move away or disappear. It has always been there, I remind you, always, always. This is what all the brothers and sisters say in the testimonies when they meet and remember. But then there is also there, I would say, for some, a phase of acclimatization to the truth, because as you said in a dream you had with a very bright vehicle, it is so intense that it bothers the person, and yet it is this intensity that you are. In some cases, a gape suddenly reveals himself. There is a before before and after. We have had several testimonies on this. And then in some cases, I would say for those who were a little too much, not in materiality, but in spirituality, in research, they are more fragile at the level of a gape, because there are precisely spiritual, behavioral automatisms too, which turn in a loop and which we do not see. And the game between the eternal and the ephemeral is precisely to illuminate the whole ephemeral, not to judge or explain it, but to literally consume it in the fire of love. A gape cannot fail, no one can escape what it is. You can do it for a long time, but not for a long time, without it suffering appears, malaise appears. 
It is to make you exhaust your own resistance, your own demands. Remember, it is the life that finds you, it is not you who can find it. And that's how you find yourself, and that's how you are free, really, and that's how you are true. But of course, the automatisms that are inscribed in the brain, brain called reptilian as if by chance, which makes memories and behaviors loop, and that we must nevertheless enlighten. But not by yourself, you don't have the ability to see everything, you just have the ability to accept everything, and so everything will be seen, no other way. As long as there is a claim to your character, to this world, you cannot be free. Be free, and you will see that you will no longer need any claims, because graces and miracles will abound in all the circumstances of your lives. Because when you claim, you put yourself on the line, what? The intention, the consciousness itself, and therefore it is a projection. And when you project, you are not free for introjection, that is, turning inward, where the consciousness disappears, where you are a conscious, where you find a gape, and everything is perfect. So obviously, it is easier to say that everything is perfect when you live miracles and daily graces in a state of a gape. But everything is perfect too, even through what you experience as feelings of injustice, imperfection, embrace in the same way, and you are free right after. All projective, externalizing mechanisms, whatever they may be, must give way to what is true and of the deepest inner order, what has been called the heart of the heart, the zero point, zero time. I say it again and again, you can only find each other again, no matter what you think today. Any other testimony or questions in this room? Sister, one moment. Sister. A big thank you OMA because everything, 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 what you have just said, is what has happened in the last year since September, yesterday, today, and indeed, all this great suffering and rebellion, this claim, this claim, everything has been lived in me as you have described it. Thank you very much. I thank you too. Another sister. I wonder, aren't we taking a little break? Sister. We could use a little break, is that possible? Yes, I've been talking for so long. Sister, it's been two hours. It's been two hours now. Already? Sister, yes. Time no longer exists. But finally, if you need a little rest time, of course, I would be happy to do so. You just have to tell you for the live listeners when we're back. Room. When do we start again? Any time you want. In about 15 minutes. So we say, and I'm not saying goodbye, I'll see you in 15 minutes. Room. Thank you OMA, thank you OMA. See you soon, see you soon. Through Jean Luc Young. Les Transformations. English Revised Translation. LMF.